It is time. It is time. Look at these beautiful blooms. This is my Encyclia Garciana Alba. I didn't want the Alba form when I bought her. I actually wanted the blue. But this is her and she is beautiful. And she's on a mount. And she is a beast. So, I have no idea how long this video is going to take, how well I'm going to be able to edit it, but there's a lot of work to be done here. And it is long overdue. I have a break in the weather. I will be taking my time. And thank you very much for joining me. I will also leave timestamps in case you don't want to see the whole process. And if you're new to my channel, I have a puppy. You can see him there in the corner well bottom left that's where he was and he decided to grab it one day and that's why it looks a little bit more mangled than it would but the reason for this intervention and it is an intervention is the fact that she is super super vigorous yay that works in my favor but she's also very very thirsty and that is why she has the concertina leaves on her growths. Because in my hot, dry summers, I struggle to keep her hydrated. And I have her mounted because I just love the way that she grows. And I think it's very suitable on a mount. But what I don't like is the fact I can't keep up with her needs. And secondly, this green algae and everything like that, it's its so disgusting. I, I don't, I mean, if I was going to keep her on a mount, then I would always opt for a my inorganic mounts that I have. Now I'm also at a different camera angle than I'm normally accustomed to. So I'm just going to take off the fishing line and then see if I'm actually in shot. <laughs> There we go. I think that might be a little bit better. Oh boy, oh boy. And yes, I'm wearing gloves because this is a year old on this mount. And she has tripled in size since I mounted her. And she is quite slimy and disgusting. So yeah, I'm wearing gloves. I don't need to do this and get all this into my hands. Oh, ideally, I would just go, love to just rip. It's also quite windy. That's why I changed the angle. Because I'm trying to protect the mic from the wind. But this is... That's why I said, I don't know how long this video is going to be. I don't know how the editing process will be. But I have to get in here. She is growing new growths, which means that new roots will follow quite quickly. And that's something I really want to take advantage of as well. It is still cool as well. So I don't put her under the stress of what might be coming with the hot weather imminent. We still have a couple of more weeks where she can settle down and understand what has just happened to her wonderful little environment. Wow, the roots have really gone in. There's a lot of damage going to happen here. And this is what I was dreading. I hate damaging my orchids just because I wasn't anticipating what they are capable of. I mean, you can say, well, now you know and you're going to improve it. But oh my goodness, when they're doing so well, I hate doing this. You can, I can hear the crunch of the roots as I'm cutting her off the mount. But this is the only way I can see at this point to even stand a chance to get her off. My idea is to keep her in one piece and just plonk her into a pot as fast as possible so she doesn't even notice anything's happened. <laughs> oh. That's my idea.
All right, we're gaining. She's coming off now. Where are you still stuck? Now, the thing is that I, what I was thinking is twofold. It could be that the mount the, is breaking down. As you can see, this just fell off and the roots are failing. And that's why she's dehydrated. No matter how much water I throw on her, she doesn't have, if the roots are failing because of the mount, that could be one issue. But because she's so vigorous, I don't see that she's going to struggle for too long in order to recover. But this, oh, this is this part, I really hate doing this. There's something in here But she's still holding on. And I don't know where to grab her because she has new growth right in the center as well. All right, oh, okay. There is a wire. Before the fishing line came a wire. Duh can see how anxious I was. I wasn't even checking her makeup. There we go. All right. Oh dear. Now is that wire going to come off or do I need to cut it one more time? Where are you? Let's cut it and then we get a better feel for what's going on. So yeah, we've had some roots just decimated. Nice roots here. Oh dear. But yeah, I'm, I'm confident that she will bounce back because she's in complete active growth. She has so much going for her. I am sure that she will not be struggling with what just happened. Not any time soon, as far as I'm concerned. The only thing that I now have to consider is the cleanup. Boy, oh boy. Of these other roots that are dead. And what I, ca what I can do is literally just place her into the pot like that and hope for the best. Because at the end of the day, let's see, are these roots? I mean, I don't want to overthink this because if it is that simple, then that's all I'm going to do. Just want to check if these roots down here are still viable. Yes, they are. They are only with algae. That's the only problem they've got. They're viable. This might turn out to be less invasive than I thought. Just make sure that I, if I can get something out while I have her before not touching her, you know? Once she's in the pot, she's not secure anymore. And if there's anything I can peel off and clean up, then I would like to do that while she's off the mountain instead of thinking I can yank away at her sooner than I need to. But look at this beast of an orchid. And if those roots down here are viable, I'm not going to be too radical. She says, and then she still plucks away. I'm going to actually just leave her like this. Now that I've got her to this point, before the weather deteriorates as well and throws me a curveball and I can't finish this project, just get her into the pot. Yep, yeah, that's, what, that's what I'm going to do. But what I have to do now is go inside. I've got to get my pot and put some Dremel 
holes into it because she's going into a semi-hydro setup. And I'll be back. Big pot, big, big, big. What are the dimensions? Does it say? 28 centimeters. All right, that should be big enough. And I did the two holes very much up into the middle of the pot depth because of her thirstiness and I want roots to be able to find their way straight into the media and then hopefully right into the reservoir. Let's not make this difficult for her. It's going to be tough enough as it is to get her situated and then hope that she doesn't blow out of the pot. And and I'm using lava rock to really crock the majority of the pot so that I don't waste what I'm going to put in next, which is akadama. Now, my thought is, is this enough or do I need more? If in doubt, get more. All right, let's put some more in. We can always take off if need be this pot is deceiving. It has quite, quite a lot of depth to it, even though it looks shallow. <laughs> All right, let's see. I don't want to clog my holes up with the Akadama, so I'm going to put some rocks there to block it from getting in there so it doesn't block the drainage. And now let's see how much Akadama I would fill in. All right, let's see. Let's get this on the road. Or better yet, into the pot. And this is quite a lot of Akadama, which I probably am going to need all of it. So let's not manhandle it too much because it's wet. I don't want it to degrade too much. All these little bits I'm not worried about. And let's see her height right now. Yep, that'll do. We make sure, however, that I don't miss where the holes are because she is growing from all directions. So into the middle she goes. There is no front or back here. Just depending on where I'm going to put the label that there is space. So yeah, she's growing from the middle from this side, she's just a vigorous beast of an orchid. I'm going to leave her at this height. Uh, I've got blooms back there, which is a shame. You see the growths that are tucked down here with the blooms? Yeah, that's a shame. I did try to train her for a year to get growths coming up and towards the light, and it did work on this side, but not for all of them. So what to do, what to do? Did I break you already? Are you broken? No. Well, what a shame. Okay, uh, da, 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 da. indecisive. Well, I'm just going to leave these as they are. And I'm going to fill Akadama around where I can fill it and hope that the rest of the roots that will grow will just grow into the pot and be happy. That's my best guess at this point. So I'm not going to be filling around the back and I'm not going to be chopping her up in order to accommodate her in the pot. I now just want to see if she'll be okay with what I'm doing with her right now. There's no point chopping her up. She is so flat against the back here from how she originally grew on the mount that nothing will help. If I take bulbs away, I would have to take at least all this part away, all this, and I'd rather have her have the energy to work with. And maybe one day when it comes to rejuvenating her when she's outgrown this pot, 
then I can work with cleaning up the back. At this point, I still don't have the courage to do that. So basically, I'm making it very, very simple for myself. I'm not going to overcomplicate things. Unfortunately, I have the squashed blooms there. I have a pseudobulb right here that I can be a little bit more cautious of and just fill a little bit of Akadama in there, not up to the rim of the base of the orchid. I'm just filling in a little bit of a gap and letting her settle down. And can I do that at this end or do I just go with what I said earlier? Nope, I'm not going to do anything at this end. There's no need, there's plenty of activity and moisture that she can sit on. Oh my goodness. Oh, am I super happy about this? No, I'm not. I'm, but I'm, I'm confident, let's just say. I am confident that she'll be fine and that is more important than what I'm considering aesthetically a little weird. But a little weird is better than going all ninja, <laughs> pun intended, and doing damage. This is a transition from a mount into a pot. I have to take that into consideration as well. This is not pot to pot. The next time when she has gotten accustomed to this, the next time I can be more drastic because the transition has actually occurred and then I can mess around with her more. But for now, as the transition goes, make it as easy for the orchid as possible. There is a new growth coming right here, so we don't want that to go all mushy. Just be careful now with the watering. I would like to find a base color for this Akadama as the, for the draining hole to see what color have I got in the pot so that I can run it clear. But considering I have this new growth here, I can't be drastic about it. Let me show you. Let's see if this works quickly off the tripod. You see there, there's a little growth coming down there. Yeah. Oh, thank you, son. That's cool. You see that little growth coming down there? That is what I'm trying to protect. Normally with fresh Akadama, I would now go and start watering, flushing, just pouring water through here so I can get a base color coming out of the holes until I see it run clear. And then I know how my Akadama is performing in the coming years because it is notorious for breaking down. If the weather conditions always go to freezing. So it does have a lifespan of possibly three to four years on the condition that it has freezing temperatures to contend with. I don't get freezing temperatures and this orchid wouldn't be outside if it was in freezing temperatures. So my Akadama, I'm expecting it to have a much longer lifespan. But for the purposes of being, you know, just aware, I do normally want to flush a pot through. That is not happening today. You can see how squished up the blooms are down here, which is a shame. Yeah, that's a big shame that I couldn't train those growths to come up and out. Maybe now this one will. Hmm. But I can't chop that part off. No matter what I do, it would take 30% of the orchid off and I'm not doing that. We have other growths to work with. We have now got some training to do with regards to how she's going to be positioned and orientated towards the light. And that is coming from this direction. I've always had her now to bring the growths out growing with the light in this direction so that I, what I wanted to achieve was bring the back up 
and it worked to a degree, but not enough. But you're in a pot now, and I hope that you're going to be happy. Right, if you've made it this far, thank you very much. This orchid, fun fact, <laughs> if you want to consider an Insignia Garciana, when I got her from Kof Orchidin, I think it was three years ago, let me just tell you, she came a cut. Like the front here with the blooms, one, two, three, and a back older bulb. So I had three bulbs, an old bulb, and a new growth. That was three years ago. Every year, instead of, well, the first year she doubled, and then she doubled from that, and this past year of 2020, she tripled. So be aware that if you would like to get this orchid, that she is a growing machine, which is nice. We like that. And we're just going to fill her up now with some fertilized water. My explanation regarding the Akadama, once again, is to be able to manage her thirst and keep her happy. And secondly, I did not put any kind of grit or anything like that because of the humidity that she requires. Otherwise, I used to be spraying her and spraying her and spraying her, which is quite tedious in my hot summers. So I just put one liter of water in there. Not enough, still not full, the reservoir. There we go. Now I can just check my base color. Ah, it's not too bad, it's clear. Still, that is the lava rock pouring out. So I have to be wary, I have to be wary. But there we go. Well, that wasn't too bad. I would say. Yeah, and now the sun is shining and I was feeling a bit rushed because I wanted to take advantage of the break in weather. Oh well, such is life. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed watching me. <laughs> it turned out a little bit better than I expected. Much appreciated. I don't need to be freaking out with orchids at this point in time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and please stay safe. Take care. Bye.